As details continue to pour in this evening about what happened at Sandy Hook Elementary, many news networks and websites will have constant coverage, which means little eyes and ears in your home are going to see and hear the same things you do. And as hard as it is for adults to process something so tragic, it's worth for, worse for those too small to understand. Joining us now is Amy Morton, a marriage and family therapist. Amy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, you're welcome. I'm sorry to have to be here. And unfortunately, um, you know, this is a tragic situation. It is. I think as an adult, one of my first questions is how? How do we process this? I'm having difficulty with it. How can a child, four, five, six, begin to understand what happened today? It's very difficult for children, especially those under the age of about seven, to process and deal with this kind of horrendous mass tragedy. Um, and so one of the things parents can do with the youngest children is really to work to try to shield them from as much of this coverage as they can. Absolutely. That's really important. Um, just because it's on the news, it doesn't mean that it's okay for them to be watching it. Because it's completely outside their experience, it, and they will have difficulty with it. Now, if they see some of it, and they probably will, mm -hmm. or they hear a conversation, and they, the, the most important thing to do is listen. And if they're asking questions, answer their questions in a reassuring way. Make sure that they know that this didn't happen to them and it's okay to tell them that they're protected and it's not going to happen to them because there's plenty of time to teach them that bad things can happen to good people and all of those things and right now is the best time to be reassuring and supportive as a parent. And that's one of the other things I think that people want to know. You know, what are some healthy ways as a parent someone can say, hey, you know, this this happened, and it's very real, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you. What, what can That's they right. do? It's for young children especially, in that elementary age group, the kinds of children that this horrific thing happened to today, um, it's, the responses need to be very black and white. It's, it's that they're safe, it is that you're going to make sure they're protected, and that they can talk to you about anything that they see or hear or anything they have questions about. It's also really important to ask them questions and not assume that you know what they've heard or know how they feel and listen to their responses. And then to give them a, and you a sense of, um, of how you deal with this, it's a good opportunity that we don't want to have but we do to demonstrate compassion to our children and help them know that when these bad things happen, there are even th bad things that happen to people in our own community. It's a good time to, to model compassion, talk about reaching out to people in need, even to the people in Connecticut. And what about for those young children who say, Mommy, I'm scared to go to school now. What if this happens to me? How do you give them that little peace of mind that they need to go back on Monday? I think that if a parent gets those kinds of questions, again, it's really important to be reassuring. It's important to talk to them about the people in their school who are there to protect them, including the um, law enforcement folks who uh, work for the school system and the safety procedures that are in place at their school. But again, it's important to be reassuring and to remember that words are only half of the, or less than half of the mm -hmm. communication with, with children. How you, your tone of voice. Right reaching out and doing what I think all parents want to do tonight and give their children a big hug is really important and for them it helps them to process and feel better. And, and one of the big things with kids when they when they have these tragedies, tragedies you work with very little children. Mm -hmm. How do they react when something, and you've never experienced something like this, we talked right. earlier, but well, so things happen. I, so. mean, I mean, I certainly re recall working with children um, in the wake of 9-11, for instance, who mm -hmm. had seen things on television and had lots of questions, and this, or in the wake of Columbine. So it's not the first time, but thankfully we don't often get um, uh, into those kinds of conversations with children, but they do have questions. And it's important to give them, to answer their questions, to give them the information they need, but not give them more information than they can manage. And that, so being, I can't emphasize enough that it's important to be reassuring, to ask them questions, to give them an opportunity to talk about how they feel and to uh, respond to them in a way that's supportive. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You definitely, you. I'm sure, have helped some parents out there who are wondering how to deal with this tragedy. I hope so. Thank you.